there's no hiding from the Emperor's judgement, and that judgement is harsh indeed when we deploy the most effective artillery the Space Marines have to offer. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we're going to have a quick look at another army list concept. This one will be focusing around the Imperial Fist's artillery, which is certainly a list that I've seen discussed online a lot, as well as having played a variant in a recent tournament. Now Imperial Fist's artillery is something that's been played quite a lot at the moment. Ignore's line of sight weapons are incredibly powerful for objective based games, particularly now most tournaments use the ITC style ground floor blocks line of sight type rules. Being able to hammer your opponent off the table, whether or not they're able to be seen by any of your guns is a really powerful ability, and nothing is really quite as strong as doing this as Imperial Fist Space Marines at the moment. Imperial Fists get Ignore's Cover as part of their chapter trait, which is great as most of the units that are hiding out of line of sight tend to be cowering in cover, and their unique Devastator Doctrine really favours things that are medium strength, medium damage, so that they're very effective both on infantry and their unique plus one to damage against vehicles makes them very effective against vehicles as well. Most of the standard Space Marine artillery choices fall very neatly into this category, whether it's Strength 5 Thunderfire Cannons, Strength 6 Scorpius Whirlwinds, or Strength 7 Whirlwinds with Vengeance Rounds. The list can be absolutely brutal to play against if you're getting the wrong matchup, so let's take a look at some of the nastiness that one variant can put out. In the version that I've chosen to showcase today, we have no less than 9 Space Marine artillery pieces deployed alongside some screening bolter armed folk with a few support characters to keep the artillery firing to maximal effect. We'll talk about the artillery first. First we have no less than 3 Relic Whirlwind Scorpiuses. These are very expensive artillery pieces at 215 points a pop, and I reviewed them in a recent video. They do have some of the strongest Space Marine Ignore's line of sight shooting point for point, but they do balance this by being somewhat fragile. Strength 6, high AP, medium damage is great, particularly when they get to be firing 3d3 shots twice a turn. These things will pretty much put decent hurt on literally whatever unit they target on the table. So at a bit of a deletion ray, that you can just throw at the most pressing threat in the entire enemy army each turn without too much thought. Next up we have three Thunderfire Cannons, which are making an appearance in lots of Space Marine lists, but rarely are they so effective as is with the Imperial Fists for the reasons we've already discussed. With Ballistic Skill 2+, They'll be pretty good at chewing through anything that has minus to hit modifiers, and with the small amount of CP we have available, we could get these guys to fire twice turn 1, or potentially slow units with tremor shells. Finally, we have 3 whirlwinds with vengeance missile launchers. They're cheap, durable, long ranged and effective, as well as combining with the rest of them to put out a decent amount of firepower. They're also some of the units that I'd consider using to block line of sight to thunderfire cannons or scorpius whirlwinds if it was necessary in deployment, as these guys really want to be getting shot first rather than the more expensive and less durable scorpiuses and thunderfires. To support this murderous artillery death squadron, we have a tech marine with Master of the Forge and Master of Machines from Faith and Fury. This will give a 6 inch aura of vehicles with plus 1 to hit, meaning that all of the whirlwinds and scorpius whirlwinds will be hitting on 2s and he can also heal a vehicle for 3 wounds per turn if one of them starts taking damage. Not bad for one command point and a warlord trait. Next we have a captain who will be upgrading to a chapter master and giving the Eye of Hypnoth relic to. This guy will give us 4 rerolls to hit for all of the units within his range, which means that even with negative to hit modifiers, we'll be pretty much hitting with almost every shot, and rerolls of 1 to wound are very nice as well. Finally, we have a chaplain who has been upgraded to the Master of Sanctity. This guy can hand out plus one to wound on the nearest units to whichever artillery piece wants it most, and potentially another plus one to hit, which could be useful if we can't get all the tanks in the Tech Marine's aura. These guys can also function as a bit of an emergency counter charge punch as well, if scary enemy units that move fast get in amongst our artillery, which we really don't want. To try and make sure this doesn't happen, we have a few screening units to throw out the front, We've got three units of Stalker Bolt Rifle Intercessors, which as well as being reasonably durable point for point, can put a bit of reliable damage on either infantry or vehicles, particularly those bolters like the Imperial Fist Doctrine. We've got one unit of five scouts also with bolters. These guys will try and secure us a midfield objective in the very early game, or potentially can just be deployed in the midfield to best screen out a decent drop zone that people might have for deep striking somewhat near the artillery. Finally, as a bit of high volume infantry fire and also some counter charge punch, we have two units of three assault centurions who will be starting in front of the tanks and make it a very bad idea for the opponent to position anything too close to them unless they want to be torn apart by siege drills. 
These guys will hopefully encourage the opponents to keep at arm's length, or if they want to try and rush the artillery, then hopefully they're going to pay for it between a whole ton of bolt of fire and also some very, very nasty close combat indeed. With the list, I'd aim to play fairly conservatively the first turn or two to give all the artillery pieces enough time to clear out most of the key threats in the enemy army. Deployment will be absolutely critical here. In particular, the Thunder Fire Cannons and Scorpius Whirlwinds aren't generally going to win in a straight fight against conventional firepower. So we need to use every scrap of line of sight blocking cover that we have to try and make sure they don't just get gone down turn one. In particular, all this anti-tank firepower will make it an absolute nightmare for a lot of vehicle lists that we're seeing in the meta at the moment. The Thunderfires will do two damage each per successful wound, and the Vengeance Whirlwinds and Scorpius Whirlwinds will do an average of three. The Chaplain's plus one to wound can certainly help against the closest targets, and we could also potentially think about using Tank Hunters to give another plus one to wound if it's going to be worth the CP cost in an early turn. Now this list does most certainly have weaknesses, despite the scary amount of firepower it can put out. Firstly, it can be a bit at the mercy of line of sight blocking terrain. If you happen to be playing on a very open, sparse table, then in general you'll have been much better off with just conventional firepower, as even this quite cheap space marine firepower does pay a premium for being able to shoot out of line of sight. Secondly, enemy fast movers that can get in amongst the artillery, potentially charge it and lock it down from shooting for a turn, could be an absolute death knell to this list. Things like shining spears or hell drakes are going to be an absolute top priority threat, and if they manage to wrap and trap some of your tanks, then it could well be game over. Another weakness is that this list is not very mobile at all, and certainly won't be doing a ton of scoring in the early game. Against the right opponents, the Centurions and Intercessors might be able to push up and try and take a nearby midfield objective, but in general it's going to have to be the later game when the list moves out to score objectives after deleting a lot of the enemy army, so if the enemy is able to hold on for long enough, they might not be able to catch up. I know there's plenty of variation that you could have done with this list, but it certainly isn't the only format that you can play it in. I could swap out the Centurions for more Stalker Bolter Intercessors, which would give us more CP. Maybe think about adding a fighty character as a counter charge threat as well, or perhaps drop a Scorpius or a couple of the Whirlwinds for some more standard conventional firepower. In particular, Dreadnoughts really like the Imperial Fists, whether that's Derideos with damage 3, strength 8 auto cannons, or just standard Contempt Dreadnoughts with quad last cannons. Overall, though, I think that the Imperial Fists are certainly a scary threat, particularly if you go second, although I guess it does remain to be seen exactly how much of this will still be intact in the same form after the Spring Balance updates that Games Workshop will probably be releasing within the next month or two. Let me know if you've had much experience playing with or against Imperial Fist Artillery, or if you can think of any obvious ways that would have improved this list, let me know down below in the comments. If you'd like to see more tactics videos from Auspex Tactics, feel free to subscribe. We have new 40k content coming out every single day, with plenty of content for the Space Marines. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page. If you are getting a decent amount of entertainment out of my videos, any support would be greatly appreciated, as it would allow me to focus on making these videos more full-time, rather than just whenever I can. And there's also some bonuses for being Patreon members, such as prize draws, voting on the future of the channel, and seeing new videos early. So if any of that interests you, then the link is available in the description. In any case, thanks very much for listening, and I hope to see you guys next time.